Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Life in New York. Hi, how you doing today? I'm huh? Mrs. Alex. Uh, this is the Ramble. We go until midnight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, when we want to find out what it's like to be technically non-proficient. <laughs> and living back in the 19th century, uh, we go to Larry Bubbles Brown. Or wait a minute, this is a, is this the 21st century now? I yeah. think it's the 21st. Jeez, I you know I've lost all track of this. Um, I, uh, in fact, I've lost all track of time. What do you know? What day this is? <laughs> All I know is it's snowing in Houston. No, I'm trying uh, today. I think today or last night when I was going to sleep, I was trying to figure out how I remember what day of the week it is. I have a I have a a, a clock that actually has the day on it, you know, day of the week. Uh, but I never look at it. But I wonder how how I keep track of it. Like uh, we were doing this on a Monday, although we'll probably play it on a Friday. But. Uh, I woke up this morning knowing it was my, it was it was Tuesday. Oh God! Tuesday. See what I'm saying? You yeah. know, I mean, how do we keep track of it now with COVID? We just we're just one day. Just uh, they have a new day they call Blur's Day, and it's every day is Blur's Day. Every day is Groundhog Day. Yeah, I've lost I've lost track of time. I used to be able to go back and count what the last seven days what I did, and now I can at all you know something i'm very glad that i do a nightly show well mon uh, tuesdays wednesdays thursdays and fridays because then i know where saturday and sunday are and then uh, monday i pretty much know where that is but because i'm doing something if i didn't have that show i would probably go what day of the week is this i have no idea you know so uh, maybe having some, but you're you're in a worse shape because you're not even working, so you don't no, have that Monday, no, so Tuesday. I totally lose track of time. It's been a lost year, and uh, this must be what it's kind of like if you're in prison. I would guess. I mean, do you wake up wondering what day of the week it is? I have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and you're the guy who remembers days. Like, yeah, not yeah. Like, you, watch you, this, folks. Uh, 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 December eighteenth, uh, nineteen sixty four. In 1964, the 18th was a Friday. I'm I, I'm not going to look it up, but I bet he's right. Well, let's look at 64. Yeah, Friday. yeah. I I don't know how how you do that. I just I don't know what the mental process is that you go through. I know. I kind of can't explain it myself. It's not a um, a subset of being smart. Uh, I don't know because I feel like I'm not very bright. But well, you are bright. You are no, if, I, if I were bright, I could figure out how to uh, use a smartphone. Or no, 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 no. That's an entirely different set of skills, okay? I mean, I know morons that can run that stuff, all right? <laughs> you know? I mean, um, uh, are comedians bright by nature? Because uh, uh, actors the are... The good ones are, yeah. Yeah, actors are stupid. But I, that was yes. The uh, actors uh, have a reputation for being not too bright. Yeah, and now people go, well, well, how come? What? How can they not be bright? And the answer is because they're always playing other people. You know, they're simply imitating life. They're not going through some kind of intellectual process to do what they do. Does that make sense? Yeah, they really often they don't have a personality of their own. They're just. Yeah, whereas comedians go through an intellectual process to make jokes and to find out what's funny and to, you know, that's part of it. The other part is performing, but there is a intellectual part that you have to have, a component. Yeah, and the actor is just using someone else's words. He doesn't do Yeah. He's not writing it, so. And also, you don't have to be too smart when the director says, okay, now when he says this to you, you give this kind of reaction. 
okay? <laughs> I want to see you go. Yeah, and he, they talk you into the emotion that you're supposed to now do. That's what a good director does. But people always said, oh, no, I thought actors are smart. I said, I'll give you an example. I said, um, I, um, I had a friend who, who's, who, whose best friend was Robert De Niro. Okay? I've heard stories. And uh, I, 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 we were at dinner. And I think it was there with my wife at the time, and I can't remember which wife was my wife at that time. Uh, and um, I, I said, uh, pretty much actor, and then we got into a discussion, I came up with this, actors are dumb. And she said, but, you know, uh, we have a person here who knows Robert De Niro. Um, they're not, he's not dumb, is he? And he went, he's the dumbest human being I know. Really? <laughs> you know, he, he's he's just horrible. Uh, he says he's a nice guy, great actor, great actor. You know, but that acting comes from somewhere else. It doesn't come from smarts. You know, so. Uh, didn't Hitchcock say he re referred to the actors as children? Didn't no, worse than that. He said, uh, he, he, they said, he said, uh, Somebody, I think it was, I think it was, uh, I can't remember who it was, was interviewing him and said, uh, I understand that you think, uh, that, think that uh, um, uh, actors are furniture. And he said, no, that's not what I said. They should be treated as furniture. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, he thought they were furniture. They were basically, they were part of the component to create what he was creating and he needed mm -hmm. them to do what they did so he could do what he did i mean he didn't even like shooting a film he said that was the most boring part of making a movie he says the best part about making a movie is when you got all these little clips you shot and you put them together you edit them together in a film he said that's what's exciting wow yeah um and i i can see that you know i i certainly would uh go along with that that theory i i always when i was doing video i didn't shooting was not as uh shooting was a means to an end once you had the footage then you did something with it you know so i understand i understand i understand him you know you know the importance of a good editor oh it, it, no director ever underestimated the value of a good editor you know in fact, I think it was Scorsese, until her, is she, did she die or retire, had the same editor for almost every film he did. Uh, and I can't remember, I'm trying to remember her name now. It starts with an S. Uh, and I, she was the, the editor for Scorsese for years, just years they, and years. Do they work together, or is it, does she have the final call? No, they work together, but... You know, uh, she will tell him, here's the best way we can do this and we can get this and we can get this effect and get the emotion. You know, when a person is editing a film, they're editing emotion, they're editing everything. They're editing for impact. And um, a, a, good, a good editor can take a bad film and make it good. You know, so, uh, I mean, I remember taking pieces that we did. The first time I ever learned how to edit video well was we went out and shot something and it was what we shot usually we shot from the beginning of something to the end of something and then we would just put that on the air and in this case everything was going wrong and I wasn't and none of it was was making any sense or whatever so I remember that we had an interview we did with one of the people that did this performance or whatever so I took that interview and I took just the audio and ran it over video of these individual little pieces we had shot that we didn't think we could put together in a meaningful manner. And that's when I learned how to edit. That was, a, that was editing, where this person was talking and we were seeing you know, this bit and that bit and this bit and that bit. And I learned how to take something which we thought was a lost cause and, and turn it into something. I showed my partner, Bruce David, the video the next day. He was saying, ah, we, that was, forget it. We didn't even get a shoot on that one. You know, we didn't, didn't get anything. Look, look at the footage. It's terrible. The, you know, 
I said, let me play with it. And the next day I called him and I said, look at this. And he said, wow, you made it work. And I said, I suddenly wow. learned how to edit. You know. You think uh, editors should get more uh, renown in showbiz. You don't hear about them that much. Well, they're, you know, they're, they're a very important component in filming. I think they're probably the most, compo uh, the most important outside of the director who just is overseeing everything. Okay? But, as, but I bet most people couldn't name one editor. No. This woman's name was Schoon Schoonmaker. I, I can't remember now. I mean, I could look it up, but I don't want to take the time right now. And she uh, she did every every Scorsese film. And if you think about Scorsese films, one of the things that you really feel stand, feels stands out is the editing. You know? Yeah. I mean, you look at the beginning of something like, uh, uh, what is it, Casino? I think was the name of the show. What was it? What was the one in Vegas? Was that Casino? Yeah. Was that was ca Casino. Yeah. Casino. You look at the opening casino, the first 15, 20 minutes of it, it is just the editing and the timing and the, you know, it, t t it tells you everything you want to know about running a casino. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that is a great opening, yeah. That's but, one of my favorite but movies. But if you think, if you just forget about any other aspect but the editing of that, it's incredible. It's mm -hmm. just incredible. It makes the film. And so people go to a movie and they go, well, who's the, they always think the star is like, the yeah. biggest thing on on screen, and the fact is, the star is just, can I say it, furniture. You know, <laughs> at best, they're furniture. They're good furniture. They're, you know, exquisite furniture. The best all, furniture, all interchangeable. If if you would go to a furniture store and buy the best furniture you could buy, that would be De Niro. <laughs> okay, you know, I mean, but it's also because you can mold him. You know, you can tell him to do it a certain way, or here's what I want out of you. And he's not this intellectual who's going to say that, well, I don't know, I don't exactly get the idea of the of the person, you know. And you think about all these actors and actresses, and the smartest ones don't have as big a career as the dumb ones. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, they have a, they, let me put it this way, I think they're kind of like you, they're, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they where you where you're stupid, but you've got a talent. A savant. Savant. Yeah, I think De Niro's a savant. He has one thing he does, and in that it, part of it, that's his worth. You know, so he's a savant. Well, somebody, I think Jerry Seinfeld. Somebody asked him about acting, and he said, "Well, children and dogs can do it. How hard can it be?" Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, comedy, you know, it's the old saying, you know, that the uh, guy in his deathbed said, you know, they said his, his, his dying hard, and he says, dying's easy, comedy's hard. <laughs> you know, and, he, and he's right. Comedy mm -hmm. is hard. It, it may be the most difficult profession to master. But when you see somebody do it well, it's like watching Yasha Heifetz play a violin. When I heard you in your latest thing that you turned out that's on Amazon, free plug, <laughs> I heard a virtuoso. I heard uh -huh. I heard uh, a, the you know comedy being played by Yasha Heifetz. Um, I, I'm not, and I'm not praising you because I don't believe it. I really felt it. Your timing is there. All the elements you are playing it like a well t played violin. Wow, you made my day. Well, no, but it's not a matter of making your day. That's what comes from doing it for so long. You know, people go... 39 years, you should be able to do it fairly well. These kid, kids want to see young comics, and I'm going, go see the old ones. These are the guys who have been doing it so long that they've got it down to a fine art. Well, Durst said that uh, he felt the comics, the older comics, are kind of like the old uh, blues uh, musicians. Mm -hmm. Do it so long, you get pretty good at it. Well, the, the, I, I, anything you do long enough, you do better. I mean, I'm, I don't know if I'm doing this as well as I used to. But, oh, I think you are. But I don't feel it. But I can do it. That's the thing. I, you, I you open up a microphone and say, Bennett, talk for 15 minutes, and I'll talk for 15 minutes. You know. And most people couldn't do that. Most people couldn't. I couldn't, I couldn't have done it when I was starting out, you know. I always had to have 
guests as a hook because I didn't know what I would do without them. I mean, I still like to have people because otherwise, you know, talking for 15, if I had to talk for two hours, I could do it. But I would be exhausted after I was through doing it. You know? Yeah. Because the mental agility that it takes and the acuity is is uh, pretty 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 d- big, you know. So, what the hell, you know? And then you die. Uh, <laughs> that that's and the part. Then we're, and then we're for, and then we're forgotten. <laughs> let's go. Let's go a little bit over here because I want I want to bring this up to you. The sad part about it is, is when I see somebody, oh, I read about somebody dying, an actor, an actress, uh, a musician, whatever. And it's somebody I really liked. And I go, gee, they died. And now all those years of honing that craft and doing it as well as they did it. And believe me, folks, if you listen to somebody who's been around for 80 years, play the guitar, and he's still got the agility with his fingers, he's better than he's ever been. Okay? And so you get to this point of... of of uh, being a you know a virtuoso, and then you die. It's all gone. It's never going to happen again. And you spent yeah. your whole life honing this skill to this point. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I I, I find it, it it depresses me. Now that I've depressed everybody out there, <laughs> I think uh, you and I have done our job. Well. <laughs> I think you and I are just, uh, I think we're in a minority of people that think like this, but it's so true. <laughs> well, you know, Woody Allen tells a story of that he always wanted to meet Groucho Marx. Because, you know, who, do, who, who wouldn't want to meet Groucho Marx, right? right? And he said he finally met him after his third heart attack. And there was just this vegetable of a man there. He, You know, and he mm-hmm. said... Depressed the hell out of me that for all his life of of having skill and and doing what he did and going through what he did, in the end, I'm meeting a guy who lost all of it because he had strokes and heart attacks and so on. He said, and I met Groucho Marx, but I didn't really meet Groucho Marx. You know, exactly. and, and and that, uh, you know, I always remember that story because it, it is kind of depressing if you think about it, that all the years of honing his skill and all that comes to that. And he's still alive. That's the worst part. Yeah. You know. um, so, uh, you know, I mean, what, the only thing that doesn't depress me is talking to Durst. OK, because he hasn't lost it up here. Pointing, no, to, fact, pointing to head because we don't have video, but uh, uh, up here, he doesn't, he doesn't have a problem up here, and he doesn't have a problem in his voice and his speaking. It's just uh, part of his body won't work. Yeah, he called me the other night. He sounded great. Oh, you did talk to him? Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah no, he, he's, you know, he's surviving. He's, gonna be, he's not going to be okay, but he's going to be good enough okay that I think he'll be doing some comedy. Anyway, I, so, I, feel, I feel like I have to sneeze, and before I sneeze, I probably should call this quits, okay? So nobody All has right. to hear my <laughs> ugly sneeze. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, welcome back. Uh, welcome to our program. Uh, this is Alex uh, coming to you from New York City. It's my, I, would I be lying? Could I? Could I? Could I point to that out there? But we weren't coming from New York City. Of course, I could probably put up the Golden Gate Bridge there too, because it's a green screen back here. Why is it I ruined the magic of television? I could just say, hey, you know, it's magic. It's what we got. This thing back here, you know, doing, doing that. Anyway, uh, how are you? Uh, I, I wish, you know, I, I, I used to, when I, when I would go on the radio, uh, every day I would talk about what happened to me in the last 24 hours. And I always had some interesting little adventures or I could take something that was rather mundane and turn it into an adventure. That's what we in broadcasting do. And it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, but there were a lot of, my life had a lot of things happening in it. And now 
There's nothing. I mean, here, okay, uh, I, am I going to make a story about, uh, oh, you know what I did this morning when I got up? I went to the Curried Coffee Maker, and I suddenly noticed that my favorite coffee that I usually have in there, I was starting to run out of. So I went to Amazon and ordered some more, and, uh, uh, and, and it's going to be here tomorrow. Okay, is that an interesting story? No, it isn't because nothing's happening in my life outside of this damn green screen back here, which allows me to at least have a professional looking program. But I, you know, I mean, it's just I wish I had more adventure in my life. And maybe now tomorrow I'm going to get my, uh, my uh, second COVID shot. Oh, finally, at last, okay. And that'll probably take me several hours, you know, standing in line. But uh, uh, I, um, uh, I'm getting my second shot. And, and that kind of, it, it gives me a little freedom. I don't know if I would be as afraid to get on an airplane, for instance, or take a subway. Because even if I got COVID after having the first shot, and especially after having the second shot, there is no one, at least this is according to one of the people that was on MSNBC, there is no one who has died of COVID who has had the vaccination, all right? So that gives me the ability to at least maybe come back here and tell you the story about my trip on the subway, you know, instead of my trip to the kitchen. Uh, maybe once every three or four days, I actually do venture outdoors, and I'm beginning to realize that my legs are atrophying, and I'm running out of energy uh, because I've been indoors for so long. And I, listen, I, I'm sitting here griping about this, and I, I, I'm, I'm griping to a bunch of people who are in the same exact boat. I mean, what did you do today that was exciting? Okay? What great adventurous story do you have to tell me? So, you know, it, it's just like that. And I, uh, I really feel, uh, uh, I feel uh, just uh, like my life is just, you know, I only, I'm, I'm at the, I'm 81. Okay? How many years do I have left? If I'm lucky... 20, but that isn't going to happen, so I'm not going to live to be 101. My mother did live to be 100, but that doesn't mean I'm going to live that long. Um, and uh, I, you know, so I only have a few years left, uh, and I would like to do something with them. I would like to do some interesting things, have some interesting adventures, go some places, do some things, you know? Uh, and, and, uh, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I, 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 I haven't been able to do that, you know. So the last years of my life, which I could spend traveling and having adventures and going places with Marjorie and and all and us uh, having having fun in our in our twilight years and and having enough energy because I've walked and I can walk around Paris and I can walk around Rome and I can walk around you know any number of cities. Um, I can even maybe climb up to the top of the uh, rice uh, terraces in uh, in China. I even have I'm coughing today. I have a cough. I'll tell you about that in a second. So I, you know, I, I really I I feel very depressed that I can't take these last years of my life right now and do anything with it. It's just ridiculous. So anyway, enough of, about me. I know I gripe and I, 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 am, I, I grouse about this sort of thing, and I really shouldn't. The other thing was that my other adventure today uh, was I woke up this morning at, uh, to uh, a rap-tap-tapping as though something was rapping on my door, and it wasn't a raven. It was they were, They're pointing the building. Have you ever heard about this? They point a building. I know, I've heard, they said, we're going to point. Well, what that is, they go in a brick building, they go into the cracks, and they get out all the loose cement that's come loose all the years and so on, and then they fill it back up, all right? Uh, uh, Shecky had to do it at his place, and the reason he had to do it is because uh, it was, um, um, uh, he has a brick house, he has a brick home, and so they had to do the pointing on the brick. So they, they, here they are, they're tapping, tapping, tapping. Now they're not tapping, now they're pneumatic drilling. 
and and uh, right outside my window, there are two guys looking at me, and I'm waiting for them to turn the other way so I can get out of bed and put my pants on. Okay, um, so that was my exciting morning. Was waking up to that, and there was, no, and then we couldn't do anything. We wanted to watch a movie, we couldn't watch it because this drilling was going on outside the window. Uh, it was just, it was, it was ghastly. It was just ghastly. So, that that was my big adventure for today. Okay, that's my big complaint for today. Why do they have to do that outside my bed, my bedroom? <coughs> mm, hold on a second. I gotta get some uh, here. Get some cough drops. See, I'm getting a cough the day before my uh, my COVID shot. Just I can hardly wait for that. You know, they'll say to me, "Oh, you can't come in. You're coughing." Yeah. Oh, and the reason I'm coughing, I think, is because they then, after all this uh, pointing, they bring out a, uh, we saw outside, they bring out an air hose, and they start just, you know, air hosing everything they've done. And we noticed, because we had a little leak in the window, that a lot of the dust was coming into the apartment. Okay? So now I'm coughing, and I think it has something to do with the dust in this apartment that came in yesterday. So that's that. That was that other thing. So see, I, I do have adventures. They're mundane, but they're adventures nonetheless. Anyway, I think it's time for us to go uh, admit our citizen panel, and uh, they're all waiting to come on. And. Um, Let's see here. Uh, here they come. Uh, there's uh, Dan Meyer, and there's Alan, and there's Trucker Steve, and there's uh, Charlie Wallace, and there's Brian Neary, and it could be you too if you want to join us. Uh, just to go over to uh, uh, the GabNet page, GabNet.net, and over on the right-hand side of the play page it says click here to zoom us, and you just click on that, and it'll automatically take your, your computer right to us. So, yeah. Hello, Dan. Hello. Hello, Alan. Hello. Hello, Brian. Hello, Hello. Charlie. Hello, Trucker hey. Steve, without the dog, Hello. because he, the, he's in a truck that isn't his own, so he doesn't want a dog who'll poop all over the place. Uh, and uh, um, we're, we're ready to go with our show. I want to bring something up. Uh, and don't feel bad about this, Alan, because I'm on your side. Okay? Uh, but I got a note today from somebody questioning something about the show and something that he had a, 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 to, something he wanted to say about something we discussed or whatever. And then he read, he wrote, "I don't listen to the show anymore because Alan's on it." <laughs> and I, 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 I'm thinking to myself, the nerve of this guy, you know, the nerve of this guy. He never, he never calls the show. So you're going to put down somebody who has the nerve to call the show? It's ridiculous, you know. So I, I, I was a bit bothered by that. And I, uh, uh, you know, um, you, you, in the beginning you were a little manic because you were new to the thing, but now you wait for your best shot, and I think you're a very good guest on the show. And Thank you. so to that guy who... You know, I mean, uh, you know, he, he griped about Phil when Phil was on it. And now that Phil isn't on it, he says, well, I'd almost prefer Phil back. <laughs> Nobody else would, but he would. <laughs> you know, uh, and I'm going, OK. Oh, uh, excuse me, folks. I got in the way. Um, I'm trying to do something. I got to bring my uh, I got to re do, do my uh, video here a second uh, and bring it down just a little bit here. Uh, because uh, I'm, I'm, my head is popping off the top. Okay, so there we go. There we go. Ah, okay, now we're fine. All right, and I will admit Ray Renati. And uh, see, what happens is, watch this, folks. If I have something on my desktop using this format, it shows up when I, when I bring it up, see, uh, in, in there. But if I use the other panel... Uh, which, but it's it's not as much in sync. I don't have that same problem. So for the time being, while this is in sync, I'll I'll um, I'll keep it that way. 
and then we'll get go to the other when it gets out of sight. So where's this guy at? I'll go kick his ass. I don't know, <laughs> you know. But I just, I just, you know, I get no written notes like that. I don't like uh, so and so on the show. Yeah, you know, with Phil, I never got rid of Phil on the show, and there was a good reason why I never got rid of Phil on the show because I don't believe that I'm going to bow to that kind of pressure. You know, I invite people to be on this program, and they. I expect them to be themselves, you know. Uh, but don't feel bad about it, Alan, because I got thick skin. Yeah, yeah. And as you've been here, you've learned how to wait for your best shot, and you know, and 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 I think you're a great, uh, you're a great uh, addition to the panel. Uh, okay, unlike unlike Jeff, who just is so annoying, <laughs> who is so annoying on this program. Every time he comes on, he just won't f shut up. You know? He can talk right now. Nobody will hear him. His mic's <laughs> off again. <laughs> was it, was what, tell him, uh, Phil. I mean, uh, Phil. Dan. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell tell him what you wrote on the YouTube page the other day about Jeff. Um. Oh. I wrote something. I'll have to look at it because I forgot exactly what it was. It, it was something like. Um, do, do I find the fact that uh, the Jeff? Oh uh, yeah, it was yeah, because that happened like two nights in a row, and you know, I, I it's not like I I have anything bad to say about anybody because I don't really know anybody that well, but I just you tell know, them what quite, you said. It's entertaining, entertaining. You, the you, you said the fact that that uh, Jeff yeah. sometimes doesn't doesn't know how to turn the audio down or do this or do that. Yeah is entertaining and yeah. and is there something wrong with me for feeling that way right and so i i, I have to agree with that. you that is one of the entertainment values of jeff is that he can't yeah. find the way to turn down the show but now he's right. learned how to do it so we have no use for him anymore <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, and lark and larkin's but, light is always on now it's no fun yes and, larkin's light doesn't go off now and then Tony's mom passed away, so he never gets pulled away when he's on. Yeah. Yeah, since yeah. this show sucks now. I know. I, I don't. I, I Dump the shark. <laughs> I'll the tell shark. you something. I'm going to stand up for Jeff, which I always would, but mm -hmm. and everybody here. Mm -hmm. But I think, Dan, you ought to go back in and pull that off. Yeah. Yep. I think <laughs> no, but I think he meant, he meant, I think he meant in that loving way, just like we say about Tony's yeah. mom and just like we say yeah. about... About Larkin's always doing the clap on, clap uh, off. It's yeah, but hysterical. somebody else will read it. You know, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. why why put something like that in there? Well, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, I mean, what's what somebody else gonna think? You know, what's well, what he's problem? basically saying is he likes Jeff. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah, I don't. Right, but that he finds his his uh, inability to do certain things entertaining, and is that wrong of him? And um, yeah. I don't, you know, I yeah. I, I like, I like it when they. Do you think? Do you, do you think it's wrong of me to feel that way, Alan? I mean, I as me, as me, as a reflection, me as a person. You're welcome to feel any way you want. I don't. That doesn't matter to me. You know, you're you, and but <laughs> I don't know to put something. I I wouldn't go on the Facebook page, mm -hmm. which we're trying to get more people on the show, <laughs> and I wouldn't write something negative about somebody else. Hmm. Well, and did you mean it in a negative way? I, I, I would say it to negative. your face. Yeah. You know. What? I, I said I'd I say didn't, it. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Dan. I didn't I didn't come on and say, oh, he's smoking marijuana. Or he's <laughs> what's what's he high on? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't come and point that out. Like that, that, somebody but I, say, but I say that to your face. <laughs> you know? Because then you right. can see. It, yeah okay well i mean I, anybody I, can read that Jeff, well you know what's interesting what's that, interesting Jeff, is and, i will get a lot of messages from time to time about one person or another or i don't like phil or i don't like yeah. alan or i you know i i uh, you know any number of people and even some people who are totally innocent and not guilty of anything okay uh but but uh, I, I think the fact that he chose to find this out about Jeff was fun, you know, that I've never seen anybody say anything bad about Jeff, ever. 
I don't well, have that, any. That's I, why I said I'm I defending have, him. I, it's <laughs> very, when I wrote that, it's very, it was very endearing. I like, don't yeah, get a note I, from yes. my mother or something. Maybe. It was very endearing. So when yeah, okay, I, yeah. yeah. It's very yeah, so, endearing. So, yeah, I, and Alan, you should ask the person who wrote it what he meant by it because don't don't interpret what you think. Yeah, yeah. I, I I take that as a loving way, just like I said, just like my examples, what? just like Ray Ray putting up the the curtains again, you know. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, it's okay. Entertainment yeah. value. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody has to represent for Tony. Are you guys talking about me? <laughs> Taking us a compliment. Yeah. Yeah. There he is. Hey, there's Tony. Hey. Hey. Oh my God! Yeah, now, Alex. Yeah. Alex, you can actually do Tony's background too now with your green screen. Yeah, well, yeah. Like I want to do oh, that. Wow! I should have ripped the piece off <laughs> and put it in the casket. <laughs> you know, one awesome. of these shows we all lost, ought to do Tony's. Yeah. Oh, oh, look. Uh, 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 Ray has his Tony background. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There it is. Yeah. My mother lives on Alex with his wallpaper. It's, it's better lit than oh, yours. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Yeah, and Tony, since your mother's died, you're not fun anymore either. <laughs> no, I'm going to try to bring her back to life. I'm, yeah. You know what I'm thinking of doing? I, I, I would never do it as a joke. I should get the Ouija board on and see if she'd contact me. <laughs> who, who, uh, oh, that could be fun. Somebody on the show said you should bring her back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If she, you bring her back to the Ouija board, and what she says to you is, did you play my numbers? I did today. It had to come out to get ah. away, so let's go. What, you still play the numbers? Yes, yeah, six one three. Her her her, her, light, her car license plate. Wow. She wasn't the best driver either. How many times? How many times, how many times so in all the time that you bet for her did six one three come up? It actually did straight in the last year and a half. One time straight and two times box for forty bucks. She thought what she hit. Yeah. She and how much money did it? How much money did it cost to get into that? Oh, forget it. She she was a loser, Alex. In that extent. And by the way, to be if you want to talk about bad taste, forget about what Dan wrote about Jeff. Look at what <laughs> look at what uh, 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 Ray has done about you and your mother. Look at that. Oh, geez, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I wasn't thinking. Good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's all right. Yeah, that that terrible. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> oh, that's terrible. That's, that's got to go. That's yeah, gotta that's got to go. go. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't even think. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. But yeah. I mean, it's, the house has never been so quiet, though. I mean, I don't want to make a joke of it, though. You're yeah. all I'm so used to her calling me. It's crazy. Yeah. It, it's it's funny how, you know, you have these things with people in your life that bug you or, or yeah. not bug you, but they, they have these things that happen in life. And then, you know, maybe people complain about stuff, and then actually when they're gone, then you miss those type of we, things. We always You're right, figure, I'll, tell you, you I'll tell you, yeah. we figured, and I, when I say we, I mean myself and I think Shecky, too, uh, that if your mother ever died, you'd be a mess. Yeah. Look at mm. you. I, I, don't get me wrong, I miss her. I do miss her. I'm not saying you don't she, love her or you don't miss her. To, she right. was a funny person, though. She wouldn't want me to laugh. She wouldn't want me to be like, you know, she always told me that. Yeah. She says, don't kill yourself and work hard. I said, all right, Mom, I'll try not to. I said, really? Yeah. But she was very laid back, my mother. So, you know, I know what I miss. Mm -hmm. I miss watching the old TV shows with her. So when I, like, there was a movie, I'll never forget. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but we watched it last year. And I never seen it. And she likes the holiday movies, right? Yeah. It was, uh, ah, geez, I forgot the name of the movie, Alex. It was from like 1940. Something with, uh, ah, shit. Something with somebody. It was a holy type movie. Uh, something with Sister Mary Bernadine. She was. What? The, uh, she winds up getting sick. And it's like a holy. She sees like a ghost, like the Holy Mother. You're not talking about I the song. Chucky wait, knows the wait, name. Wait, 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 you're not oh, okay. wait a minute. You're not talking about the song of Bernadette. Yes, that's yes. the one. She made me watch it last That's year, about that's, that's about Lords. It's about the woman who saw yes. Jesus and, and yes. you know, everybody that's goes the there every year now and throw leaves their crutches mm -hmm. behind, you know. Yeah, and they don't believe you know what? I watched it last Passover with her and it got me a little tear jerk because now when I was watching it again, at the end of the movie, because she dies, my mother was crying. I always remember that when I watched that movie, I'll watch how, it. Why do I know this sort of thing? You know, I I, I, I couldn't even remember that tonight how to do certain things to get the show on tonight because I took my nice <laughs> pill last night and it makes me adult-pated. But how do I know this? The star of that movie was Jennifer Jones. 
Now, who yeah. knows who oh, Jennifer Alex Jones was? Jones. Alex, we should What did you, like you say, Charlie? I love <laughs> Jennifer Jones. That portrait of Jenny was just fantastic. One of my favorite movies of all time. But Jennifer Jones, I would say, if, if we said there was a an actress who doesn't get remembered, it's her. My mother loved her, Alex. She was crying at the end of that movie. She said, we're so good in it, she said. Wasn't, yeah. wasn't she, didn't she play the mother in the Partridge family? Jennifer no, Jones. No, that was, was Shirley <laughs> Jones. Shirley Jones. Oh, Shirley Shirley Jones. Jones. <laughs> that was Shirley Jones, my friend. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Hey, John, John, so what happened to your light? You fixed your light. This is boring now. Can you go back to the yeah. light? Well, then we <laughs> talked about the fact that your light now never goes out, so you've lost your your entertainment your value. Entertainment this, uh, value has gone down. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 trucker Steve doesn't have the dog with him right now. You know. Down. <laughs> you know. Adrian's not here. Down. Yeah. All of us are losing our entertainment value. Yeah. That's why we're losing viewers. I think so. Oh, here comes Ray Renati <laughs> back again. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm on back. Just quit diddling with your stuff, you know. I have just... ADHD. I can't stop. <laughs> I, I mean, do. I mean, I could put right. some... Listen, and I could not put, even Jewish. I could put some horrid things on behind me, but I don't. Look at this. Isn't this nice? Isn't that a nice background? Well, mine's yeah. okay. It's San Francisco mine's, during the day. Mine's got video. It's, the lights are going on and off and stuff mm. back there, you know. But uh, yeah, like yeah, nice. yeah, I'm very, very oh, wait. happy with it. I, I had some ugly ones I could show you, but I'm not going to show you. Um, well, wait a minute. This this was the one that I uh, I, I was thinking of using, but uh, uh, wait a minute. I got to figure out where are we on a panel here. Okay, so I got to do this. Wait a minute. What do I have to do? Um, uh, oh, wait a minute. What, what, which which panel am I using? Uh, this one. Okay, there we go. Case the Let's need. see here. Uh, see, there I can get rid of. Uh, uh, oh no, jeez. I I don't know where where is this. Where is uh? Huh. I don't know how I do this now. Uh, I I just think it's what. Oh, it's whatever my camera. Is. Oh, I know where it is. Ah, I'm not going to do it. Forget it. It's going to take too much to do. I like the picture in the background right now of you, Alex. What the picture that I'm using? New York, New yeah, York? yeah, the New York. Yeah, I, yeah, I, nice. I find that's the the best one. Somebody called it San Francisco a minute ago. Well, the thing I like no, about that was me. No, I'm not San Francisco. Francisco. Yeah, yeah. I the know. thing I like about it is, is that I looked at a lot of stuff and I had like you know, uh, the Gabnet logo in back of me and a whole bunch of other things. And they were just too busy. I didn't want something that was really busy. I didn't want something that would detract from my beauty. You know, so. that's why I blurred my background so everybody can see my beauty. Yeah, or, mm, stand it, out. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so um, anybody have any interesting adventures? I was talking about how adventurous my life is now. Anybody have anything that was an adventure of some sort? Oh, John Larkin. I went over to Moscone today where they're giving shots. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I asked them. I said, hey, can I get a shot? You know, and they, they said, well, you have to be, uh, uh, you know, in some kind of a certain, you know, tier level. And uh, they said, you got to be over 65. I go, well, I'm 63. And they go, oh, okay, well, then are, do you work like in a service? And I go, no, not really. And I, I go, I did have a comorbidity, though. I just got over. Uh, Shingles. Uh, Shingles. Shingles. No, over uh, COVID. Jingles. Pneumonia. I had pneumonia oh, about a pneumonia. month ago. Oh, you have pneumonia, yeah. They said, okay, yeah, go ahead, go in there, get in that line. <laughs> I saw this fucking line. I said, you know what? Fuck this. I'll just wait till I'm 65. Yeah. <laughs> and if you waited in that line, you would have gotten to be 65 yeah, before yeah, you got there. Yeah. It was a total mess, you know. As I said, I never waited in the line that long without getting an iPhone at the other end, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I got mine too, and I froze in one of those lines. Froze to death. Really? It was windy and freezing. Well, I got. I it's supposed to rain tomorrow, and I, I find that freezing. iPhones freeze all the time in the cold. Yeah. Well, we're go we're going to get out. We're going to get there early tomorrow, earlier than we should. They say only show up five minutes beforehand. We don't have any place to put you. I just know there's going to be a line. Okay? Yeah. So we're yeah. going to go down there about a, out today too. We're going to go there about a half hour early. And, so Robert, uh, Robert got his shot yesterday yeah. and he wasn't on last night or today i wonder if he's okay 
I told you it knocked me out the day after my shot. Wow. Yeah. But, but, I didn't what, your, what, you mean your first I, shot, Charlie? No, my second shot. Second I, second shot. Second shot Wednesday. I was dead all day yesterday. That's I what, heard, that's what I hear. So you go lie in bed and just take it easy. Yeah. yeah. Better get the COVID. Yeah. What were you just, you <laughs> felt exhausted, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's just, the, the what people say. It's just fatigue. You know, no big deal. I'm mm -hmm. tired all the time. So I'll just be a little more <laughs> tired. You know. And uh, how long did it take for that to start happening? The next day. I mean, I was fine Wednesday. Mm -hmm. you know, I had the shot at 5 o'clock. I was fine the rest of Wednesday. I woke up Thursday morning, mm -hmm. and I could hardly get out of bed. Yeah. Wow. Maybe it, maybe it wasn't uh, the shot. Maybe it's you getting old. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I had the shot at 1 o'clock, so I'm okay. Age. <laughs> It's one of the side effects of the shot. It shows it's working on the second one. It's like your immune system is activated. Yeah, absolutely. Like it did something. Yeah. Yep. Well, I got somebody coming over Sunday yeah, to, to work on our washing machine and dryer. So I hope oh, I, can, see, I, hope I can at least get out of bed to open the door for them. Yeah. Well, that'll be. Just well, remember to put some clothes on. Hear about huh? on Tuesday. We'll yeah. What? About Tuesday? Yeah. No, I'm, you yeah. know, some people say they've had no problems with it the next day and other people say they've, they've gotten exactly that but it's nothing terrible you know i mean it was it, it wasn't time. insufferable you're just not used to being that exhausted yes yeah. uh, uh alan see alan, hey, you know alan you know, Dan, raises what his really hand bothered, huh? what really bothers me is not that you smoke weed or that you're high on the show <laughs> is the damn blinds behind you are never straight yeah they're oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking I'm about a little yeah. crooked yeah. Oh. Do you oh, smoke Dan. pot before you come on the show, Dan? No, not all the time. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if this is the I normal. Mean, no, normal. that's oh, that's it. not that's not that has neither of those two things have anything to do with each other. That's just because my windows suck and I'm not very good at straightening out my um blinds. He's a bachelor, okay. you know? Come on. You know, yeah. like, like, I could I mean, put on one of those backgrounds you and can then see, you, you can see he's, a, he's a, you know. I'll tell you the difference between a bachelor. <laughs> uh, 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 Dan is a bachelor and he doesn't yeah. care what that room looks like. Right. 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 I don't get it. On the shit. other hand, Brian is married. Here, I'll move to San Brian Francisco. is married and his better? wife makes sure everything's in the right place. Doesn't she? <laughs> but you still yeah. see my window through yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Huh? Brian? Come on. Yeah, no, I'm very anal about stuff. This is my this is my my office, so I keep it really nice and neat. Yeah. Really, in the garage, and then right. she has her closets. What are you this gay or something? I what? My, picture. <laughs> I, my office is a mess, and that's why I like the blur. Yeah, yeah. You're on I'm mute, trying Ray. to find a blur. Ray, you're <laughs> muted. Well, this yeah. room is very nice. Look at the view I have. At last, I'm not showing that uh, that uh, that bookcase behind me anymore. When, oh, thank God! It was millions of dollars of CDs, DVD worth. Uh, yeah. huh? What? Oh, yeah. All the DVDs, all your fortune back there. Yeah, yeah. And this thing, this the green screen comes down really fast, really easy. Mm. Yeah, I just push push it down. It just goes right down. I gotta get it one like that. Yeah. This one's yeah. Yeah, it it uh, it's terrific. Hey, um, Alex, did you get your little SAG award card where you can like watch all the movies and stuff? They're all you know, yeah. Every year, this time of the He's, year, it was a great time of the year because we would get to get screeners of movies that were like in theaters and stuff, right? And they were great. DVDs were great to DVDs, and and you could go. Well, they had the thing where you could go online and watch them online, and uh, oh, uh, you know it was all the movies that were in the theater, so you didn't have to go to the theater to see them. And it was like go and and Shecky would call me up and say, "I just got such and such," and I go, "Oh, can you uh, can you send me a, can you give me a copy of it?" Uh, you know, in other words, screener season was a big deal. Yeah. Now, what are the screeners? Uh, Sucks. Uh, it's, uh, the, uh, the 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 Chicago Seven, right? Awesome. Netflix. It's everything everyone else can watch. And no, it's it's. Uh, I I. In fact, there's one film, Nomad Land, with uh, Francis McDormand, which I wondered where we could find it, and it's it's on Hulu. I what? actually got one oh, screener yeah. today on a DVD, a real one. Really? Like old, like the old days. I got one. Yeah. No, I got one too. They sent me Ted Lasso. 
Yeah, I think that's which, see, which, is on, uh, which is on which is on Apple TV. Hmm. You know, it's the only free thing I ever got from Apple. So no. you guys are just mad that you can't lord the fact no. that you see it's just <laughs> all these all these movies. Before us, that's what it is. All the movies that are nominated, <laughs> you can all see them now. All, You're just all the movies that, that are nominated are available online. Yeah, for everyone can see. You don't have your special little thing anymore. Well, but, yeah, that's right. And I like can. to lord it over you and go. I just saw, you know. This and now we, yeah, exactly. I think, I think we just found out who it. wrote that nasty thing after. about me. What? I think we just found out who wrote that nasty thing about me. Who's that? Dan. I'm kidding, Dan. Oh, no, I'm just boy. Just picking on you. I'm just picking on you. That's yeah, okay. that's what I got. Ted Lasso. Well, anybody that would write a nasty thing about Jeff, probably there you go. There's the Ted Lasso right there. Oh, I was talking about the, the guy that wrote about me. Hmm. Oh, by the way, um, I watched one episode of Ted Lasso last night on on Apple TV. Yeah, and I'm not going to go watch episode two. Uh, oh, geez. I have no Great. desire to. They used to give you these fancy DVDs. That, oh, oh they, you know, but I mean, it was just a whole deal, right? You know, yeah. and now all these things are being played off on these uh, streaming services because there's no yeah. theaters, and and they're going to bring the theaters back, but nobody's going to go to the theaters anymore. Who wants to? Any of you guys got, want to go sit in a movie theater anymore? I, I miss the movies so much. Do you really? Do you, what do you miss about them? The guy kicking your seat? Well, <laughs> the I nice mean, wallpaper they, they have on the wall. The crying, the crying, the crying baby because somebody didn't <laughs> figure that they had to get themselves a babysitter. So you're watching some movie and this baby is crying and the woman isn't nice enough to pick the baby up and take him out to the lobby. Yeah, you like that. That's great. It's great, great. The that fact is, that the film is supposed to be in 3D, but it isn't. You know. Huh? I, well, I, I remember when I saw that. Uh, what's that Sandra Bullock a movie? Gravity. Mm -hmm. I, I saw that movie on TV. I was like, man, I wish I would have seen this in the theater because that was quite a spectacle. There are spectacle movies like that that you want to yeah. see on a big screen. Well, I, but I have a big screen. You know, I have a, a 65 inch screen and uh, I'm sitting close enough to it that it takes up the same field of view as a movie screen would be in a theater. I've got stereo sound. I've even that TV set will even play 3D. Wow. So what do I wow. need to go to a movie theater for? It's, That's right. to, and, oh, oh, I forgot. I forgot. It was so I could pay 12 bucks yeah. for a box of popcorn. Right, exactly. Yeah. The whole experience. I can watch so, the movies right here in my messy office. By the way, do you ever try to bring in your own popcorn? I used to they, they they take, they, I sneak it. They take it away from you. Mm -hmm. Put it in, you wear a big coat and you stick it and, in there. And I That's often, you know, I've often wanted to have, I, I, I've always, if I ru have rude anything in my life, is that I've never had fuck you money. <laughs> and if I had fuck you money, I would take a box of pop, I'd bring my own popcorn, have them tell me I can't have it, have them confiscate it, and then go get my lawyers and have them sue the, mov the movie company, the movie <laughs> theater, because that's uh. restraint of trade. They're trying to force me to buy their popcorn. And their popcorn has nothing to do yeah. with the movie. And you know what the court would probably say? What? You don't have to buy the popcorn. Oh, I would win that one. Probably would win. So. Yeah, I would win that. Just have a popcorn one. corking fee. You know, you just like <laughs> yeah, corking fee. <laughs> corking fee. Bringing the plastic bag. Yeah. Corkage. Yeah. yeah Cork. Corkage in a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Bring your own popcorn. <laughs> And uh, you can buy our butter for seventeen dollars. Yeah, exactly. Let me, let me ask you a question here, because I think we I want to get a little bit into politics tonight, uh, because we have it, and uh, that scared uh, Scott, uh, or, excuse me, Kevin away last night. <clears throat> uh, I I was uh, looking at uh, this fight that's going on in Washington about the fifteen dollar minimum wage, oh, yeah. and I'm thinking to myself. Shame on you for even arguing about a fifteen dollar an hour, yeah. uh, you know, minimum wage. It should be twenty five. Sure. You know, in this day and age, mm -hmm. and anybody who works a job, and I don't care how crappy the job is, or how min minuscule it is, or how how little it takes a talent to do, you come to work every day 
you spend 40 hours, you, you deserve $25 an hour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, to absolutely. say fifteen dollars an hour, like they're being magnanimous about it, <laughs> is bullshit. You know. Well, also the fight for fifteen has been going on for so long. By the rate of inflation, it should be yeah. like twenty-three by now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. I mean, in San Francisco, if you make under like a hundred and twelve thousand a year with a family and four, you're in poverty. Right. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's way over 15 I, bucks I, I, an hour. Well, I'm telling you that, that uh, people who say, well, $25 an hour, if you do work a 40-hour work week, mm -hmm. that's going to be $1,000 a week. Yeah. I, I, okay. I think, I, think ought, I think they ought to raise teachers' wages, oh too. Oh, my God, yeah. Hell, yeah. Teachers, <laughs> you, you go to school for four or five years to, be, to get a teaching credential. And by the way, you got... And they in, pay you nothing. To, to get ahead in schools, <laughs> you have to have a Ph.D., yeah, 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 they make you know, you're, you're, the you're, 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 masters. Yeah. the masters, yeah, masters, yeah, At least the masters, yeah. yeah. You can, you can, if you're a teacher, if you're a teacher and you go to school for five years, you can get an MBA, you can get, you could probably work for Brian's company or something like that, yeah, and make a lot more money, yeah. Well, you know, you really got to want to teach. Mm. I mean, and, I, I it, it, you know, I, I'll, I'll bet you that Dan is not making a hundred thousand dollars a year teaching. Oh no, not at all. And here, no, here, I'm a sub, so I'm way at the bottom of the well, total. Yeah. Well, look that at, sucks. Look it at this. Shouldn't be that way. Yeah, it sh it shouldn't. But yeah, I'm I'm used to it, unfortunately. You, you, <laughs> so. you take your you take your teacher, and you uh, uh, expect them to t it, to take care of your children yeah. for six hours a day, be be uh, among them. And they're baby, basically babysitting your kids. They're taking care of your kids. How many parents are griping that because they kids have to learn at home right now? They can't go out and have, take that other job and so on. And and um, I just think that anybody that is entrusted with the raising of your children, who spend more time each day raising them than you do, <clears throat> deserve to be paid yeah. a rate commensurate with that. You Absolutely. had your hand up, Brian. Apparently, you had something you wanted. No, so, I just I, I was agreeing with you about, yeah. about the the whole teacher thing. And yeah, so Stephanie is having problems in math class, mm -hmm. and the same teacher that Simon had two years previous, and that teacher was so patient. She kept emailing me, and I told her please email me if any issues. And Stephanie was missing assignments and all this stuff, and now she turned her grade around to an A, and she has a straight A's. But that one class math, she has a hard time with math. Yeah. But uh, uh, wanted uh, to get, she wanted to get out of that to go to the lower one because it's advanced yeah. math. And she turned her grade around and, yeah. and the teacher, you know, emailed me back saying, thank you guys so much for all the attention and all this stuff. And I told her, well, they're the real heroes that are dealing mm -hmm. with this from afar. And they're not, you know, they weren't trained to do that. So John Larkin had his hand up and then Ray. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was reading somewhere today. I, th I think it was today in the 1950s, 75 percent of the people in America thought that the government should provide a, um, um, you know, a decent living for everybody, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, a, a living to live off of. But by the by the time of the Reagan era in the 80s, yeah. late 80s, it, it went down to about 30 percent of the American people thought that the government should provide a working living. Well, I mean, how much, how much, how much is the minimum wage now? It's like five and a half, something oh, like that. Seven and a half. Seven and change. It's what? Yeah. The federal minimum wage is like seven and change. They haven't raised it since like. Seven twenty-five. Seven dollars and twenty-five cents. Yeah, you know, wow. I just looked up one hundred and twelve grand a year in San Francisco is the equivalent of fifty-five bucks an hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with teachers, I mean, I don't, I, I think they're making probably around $50,000 a year here in the Bay Area. That's mm -hmm. poverty. Mm -hmm. yeah. Total poverty. Just by what Ray said. I mean, that's just crazy. And they're putting, and they're putting their own money into it. There's that, one, one teacher that, that I sub for. Yeah, that, she, uh, that really tops it off to me. That pisses me off that yeah. the government doesn't pay for school supplies. Right. There, yeah, that like I said, there's this one teacher. She did a great job with the barriers for COVID. She got all this on her own dime. She got all this PVC piping and little plastic things. Little board is, is just fantastic. And you know, she paid for that out of her own pocket, her own dedication. They're not going to pay her anything for that. Bullshit. <laughs>
it's a, it's amazing. It's just amazing yeah, that well. we that we don't we we think that we think we're being really magnanimous when we say fifteen dollars an hour. Ooh, just puts chills down my back. What am I get? What would I do with all that money? You know, <laughs> especially I mean, in a city like I'm, New York. I you get, could live like a king. Yeah. Thirty-one thousand well, I mean, dollars. I'm is, rolling is, is in the, gold. Is the is the is uh, the penalty for not having a good education, or the penalty for not mi but for missing your front teeth, uh, or the penalty for any number of other things, being thrust into poverty? You know, I don't think it's right. I don't think any American should be forced to live in any form of poverty. Oh. And I think. I think, quite frankly, and I've said this years ago, and I, I you know, this people tell me I'm nuts when I say this, but I think we should actually pay people not to work. I think there's a certain amount of the public that doesn't wow. want to work, finds work uh, oppressive, and doesn't want to work, and there aren't enough jobs for everybody anyway. Okay, mm -hmm. so why not pay people not to work just like we pay farmers not to grow crops? Not to grow food. Good. Yeah. yeah. Well, we sort of, we, we sort of do that. What do you mean we sort of do that? Well, we, we welfare. A lot of people that are on that's welfare. All, work. That's all. Uh, welfare is all. It's means tested, and yeah. you know I'm what I'm talking about is universal basic income, which that's something that's a concept that's been around a while, but well, that's I, different I, from I, welfare. I'm just saying, I, all I'm saying is what Alex said that, you know, we ought to pay people not to work. Well, welfare yeah. does that pretty good, unfortunately. A lot of these people that are on welfare can work. They can do something, mm -hmm. you know. I understand there's people that are handicapped, that can't walk or can't whatever, or, or, they're, or they have PTSD from the war or whatever and can't do a job. But there's a lot of jobs these people on welfare can do, but well, we I give just, them money I just, yeah. to sit at home and do nothing. I just feel that work in a lot of cases is so oppressive. Why should somebody work in order to survive? You know, I mean, that the, there's enough work for people who want it, who feel that the sense of accomplishment from working is out there. I, I mean, how, what you know, how many jobs do we have and how many people are there to fill them? Uh, and uh, rather than take a menial job or whatever, I think we should just tell somebody, if you don't want to work, if you don't like the concept of working, then we'll pay you not to work because you're supplying a service by not working in allowing someone else to take a job you won't take. Right. You know? the, the only problem there is then you're setting up a whole thing where that person has to, who's going to justify I'm a fucking socialist. Work. What can I say? Well, okay? yeah, I am too, but you know, yeah. it's going to, you're, it's a whole thing we're setting up here. We're doing that. Well, but. no, but I, you know, I, I don't get with the concept that somebody who doesn't want to work is lazy. <clears throat> uh, I mean, they may want to just spend their lives uh, doing some kind of artistic <laughs> pursuit, you know? And and not or have maybe to, you might want to volunteer, doing things your whole life. I instead. don't. Of, no, no, that yeah. sucks. I mean, whatever. <laughs> Somebody might want to do that. I mean, I mean, well, you know, I I'm retired. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, self-employed for many years, mm -hmm. uh, doing investing and stuff like that. I have enough assets to live on comfortably, mm -hmm. own my own house, all that kind of stuff. Everybody ought to be able to do that if they yeah, want. Well, you are a cop, yeah, aren't but, you? But by the way, yeah. Tony, how does it feel yeah. to be unemployed? Well, actually, I'm still working because I'm selling my books. So I've been working. No, 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 no. I'm talking about oh. about the taking care of a little old lady job you had. Can I say something? I miss my mom, but I don't miss the nights. I actually sleep at night. I feel so. I'm not going to. She was calling me all night. I told her. You know, so far, I've, uh, you know, I thought you would be I like, sl when your mother died, you'd be slashing your wrists. Instead, you're doing some kind of Spanish I mean, I dance. I do miss her, Alex. I do miss her. Because, you know, but I don't. No, you, I think you're I saying that to convince her. yourself you miss her. Yeah. You're going to miss but, her. But now yeah. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you the big like question. Vampire. I'm going to ask you the big question. What do you yeah. miss about her? Hmm. That's the only thing is, I miss her calling me, Anthony, but at two in the morning calling yeah. me. I used to jump out of bed thinking she was, something was wrong. What do you want? I need water. I mean, she calls me at two in the clock in the morning for water. Yeah. I mean, come on, Ma. Oh, I had to get her peppermint patties. I mean, Jesus Christ. See, <laughs> see? I didn't sleep. I didn't well, laugh. It's, it's, no, because she used to call. I used to thought she fell out of bed or something. So what's the matter? Can I get some ice? 
Mind you, call me. What a, a terrible me. son. She was only worth That's, something to you when she was making you money. Okay. I, 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 want I mean, I miss, so I miss her telling me how to cook things. That I do miss. In case Tony's people don't know like, what we're talking I'm about, Tony was actually know. being paid by the city of New York to take care of his mother. Yeah. And Ke I think Kevin does that too. Kevin gets yeah. a salary yeah. to take care of his mother. Gee. That's a good job. Yeah, too bad my mother mm. isn't alive anymore. Mm. But then again, she'd be like 135. So I, you know. Mm. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can get somebody to come in and take care of me and, and get paid for it. it yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't mind yeah, that. You, uh, what, what do you do for a living, John? Um, I, I'm an usher in in theaters, you know? Oh, awesome. But, do you but, have the flashlight and do you have the flashlight and everything? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I help take they, people to their seats, you know? And, mm, are they yeah. open? Are there theaters? Oh, no, that's it. I haven't worked uh -huh. in, in a year. Uh, fucking no. a year. I haven't been working. So, um, but I got some money, you know, that I'm, that I'm living off of, but I want to go back to work. I'm going stir crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I think imagine. everybody's going stir you crazy. Get free I mean, movie, uh, you get free movie tickets? <laughs> no, it's not movies. It's like, you know, theater, like, like the rock concerts and the, Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, there's definitely none of that going on. The concert. Yeah, I've been doing that stuff for like 30 years. I used uh, to be a, a stage hand, you know? And now I'm getting too old for that, so I just do the mm. usher, help people find their seats. Okay. You could uh, stay in practice. You can go to church and be an usher at church. Yeah. I always wondered in a movie theater, maybe you can answer this for me. Uh, I would pay, oh, I don't know how many dollars. Now between my wife and I, we pay about, oh, $42 to see a movie here in New York. Let's mm -hmm. forget the cab fare. I'm just talking about to get in the theater. Or the popcorn. And they give you yeah. a ticket. And then, as you then walk through, they rip it in half. You know? yeah. <laughs> Come on. I bought, that. I bought those tickets for $42. You, this is destroying valuable property. I never could $20. figure that one out. It, couldn't they come up with something better than handing you a ticket and then ripping it in half? Well, now everything's like it's called observational comedy, folks. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's now a souvenir, has though. Tickets on their phones, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You get you have the tickets. Yeah, on your right. phone. And, and then I the I did that once, and they they broke my iPhone in half. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they ripped over the phone. Yeah. So, can I ask? I'd like to ask Dan a question. What do you teach, Dan? Oh, uh, well, I'm a substitute teacher, so it's kind of, uh, I mostly stick with elementary school. Well, okay. not mostly, exclusively, just because I don't want to teach anybody who's bigger than me. They don't want you so, hanging out with young teenage girls is what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it's like, um, yeah, up, upper elementary is kind of the the sweet spot, I would say. Uh -huh. so, you know, do they like job? I mean, I, I understand it's it's substitute but do, you, do they have enough work where you live that you are uh well constantly? that's well that's well that's the thing right now no because they're, they're one of the bigger districts where i work most of the time is just coming back so i've been working mostly in a smaller district which you know i'm not needed as many days I, I, so i've been told, that has yeah. really cut into things a lot what is so. the worst grade to teach the yeah. worst grade because i've been told it's three uh, I, t I tell you, I tell you what, um, the days i kindergartners defeat me. Really? Kindergarten. Yes. Kindergarten. It's <laughs> like hurting little kittens. It's yes. they're adorable, <laughs> but I just, the days yeah. I've had them, it's like, I can't, yeah. I, I can't, you know. No, that's probably why you smoke weed. Oh, by the way, yeah. uh, by the way, Brian. Well, you know, Brian, they, there's, you know, you have anxiety. I have plenty of anxiety. So I'm, I'm, I, I got something I'm important okay. I have to say here. Uh, Brian, if you can see me, would you send me more of this? I'm running out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, they, so the teachers got bumped up in the line. So February 28th. So they're starting to take the, the mm -hmm. vaccines on Sunday. 
They sent us a letter saying, we have set Wednesday, April 21st as start date for in-person learning for some students. Well, you know, Dr. Death have an update? It's, what would you say, Steve? Does Dr. Death have an update? Oh, yeah, Dr. Death oh. have an update on what we have. What are the deaths now? They're going oh, down. yeah, well, we have 2,046 <laughs> American deaths. Well, it's today. going down, but that's still 2,046 deaths. Yep. Yeah. Right, yeah. Up to 510,000 now for uh, total. Oh. That's still two-thirds uh, of a 9-11. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was gonna say. A uh, uh, good perspective is like how many nine elevens per day. Well, no, nine eleven was was three thousand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I said it's two thirds of a nine eleven. Two thirds of nine. No, it's it's double nine eleven. No, no, no. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, we <laughs> wait a minute. Three thousand people died in nine eleven. Yeah. Right. Okay, so how many times over that is this? I mean, it's a hundred times, isn't it? No, I mean just per day. I mean per oh, day. Oh, per day. day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, it's like how many nine eleven per day? Yeah, yeah, per day. For we a while over. there in January, we were having four and five thousand yeah. people dying a day. Yeah, you're, you're talking like about you, you, how many World War Twos is well, the death is the death they, toll? Oh yeah, that's. I think this is the biggest thing. It's almost. It, I think there are m almost more deaths now. We're getting to the point where we're almost going to have more deaths than World War II. That's we have oh, no, we passed that already. More already. More oh, no, we deaths. haven't passed sure. it. I think oh, World War II was about five hundred and fifty thousand American lives. Really? So we we were not. We haven't hit it yet, uh, but we're well, damn but close. War. You know. I don't know how many lost from the Civil War. By the way, do you hear that Donald Trump? Lot, is, like Donald million. Trump is going to address CPAC. On yeah, Sunday. tomorrow. Yeah, is it Sunday? Oh. Tomorrow or Sunday? He Sunday, needs the money. Tomorrow. Did you see the golden calf they were wheeling out for? Oh, Jesus! God damn! What was? That? What was? It looked so stupid. It's a golden, have a golden it, idol of Donald a Trump. Go, a golden that. statue of Trump, and and I'll bet you anything, you know who. <laughs> God. And whoever they commissioned to make that thing, it's like they had to know they were making it look stupid. How biblical <laughs> is that? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. It's so the golden weird. calf and they're wheeling it down. And then there's audio of people like Trump 2024, four more years. Yeah. Like, what the hell's with you fucking? It looks like a cartoon. Well, I'm yeah. looking at it right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bob, Bob's some, big boy. Some of the Republicans. Yeah, that's what I thought. Bob's big boy. <laughs> there were some no. Republicans who today didn't show up for the vote in Congress. For the uh, for the yeah. you know the appropriations bill, <clears throat> and um, uh, uh, and that was fine. But they used it as their excuse that it was a you know COVID, during COVID they didn't want to have to travel, but they would vote from home. Okay, right. And then they all showed up at SeekPack. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, Bob, Bob, Bob or whatever her name is, Boba Deck or whatever, whoever that bitch is. Over. Uh, uh, and Obert. and Green. Yeah. I mean. Oh. It, and, yeah. and uh, uh, today, uh, what's his name, um, McConnell, uh, said that if Donald Trump were the nominee of the party in 2024, I mean, he's a little early to talk about that, <laughs> that he would vote for him. I, I, I don't get this is guy. I mean, this guy is a, the, as big a piece <laughs> of shit as Trump. Here oh, last yeah, week, now. Trump told him he was a worthless piece of shit. Yeah. He turned around and told Trump he was the same thing, and yeah. now he's saying yeah, the Republicans. I think back I think what he's his asshole. what he's saying though. I believe I will yeah. I will I will uh, try to interpret his intentions. Is that if Trump ran in 2024, was the nominee of the party, because he's a good Republican, he'd vote for him. That's what I think he was saying. Yeah, but it didn't well, come. Yeah. But it, it, he didn't say that if he decided to run and had to go through the primary process, that he would necessarily support him. Oh yeah, he would. Well, they're, we don't know. They're they're both cut know. from the same piece. But, you know. You know uh, let's see here, 2024. That's about the time McConnell will be coming up for re-election. So I think he doesn't. He's going to be very careful about what he does. Right. Well, McConnell just got reelected, so yeah. he's, he's twenty twenty six. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He's twenty twenty. Who has absolutely no self respect is Mike Pence. Well, I mean, Pence he, disappeared. I, no, but he's he's backing Trump again. Is he Pence? That's what I heard. Is no, that wrong? Um, 
Trump Trump said he wouldn't speak at the CPAC if uh, if Pence showed up. Oh. So, so well, I heard Pence, that Pence and he had had conversations already, and Pence is kind of reconciled. Well, I haven't heard any of that. The well, maybe maybe I heard the wrong thing. McCarthy. What's he trying to reconcile? He only did what his job was. You know, and he also had like a murderous throng after him. I yeah. know, called on by hit by Trump. Yeah, because Trump <laughs> said that Pence was a traitor and whatever, and you know he's on the hit Don't list. Pence. Here it says Pence reportedly speaks favorably of Trump in the GOP meeting and intends yeah. to launch a new political organization. Oh sure. The other story that came out today was. Uh, Biden is not going to do sanctions against Saudi Arabia for the Khashoggi thing. Ugh. Yeah. Um, Why uh, do we just kneel to them? Alan, God. you had something so, you want to say? I, somebody here would probably know. Maybe many of you would. I wouldn't know. Um, if Trump is charged with a felony and convicted of a felony in New York, can he run for president? No. Nope. No. No. That, that's what my thought was. Felons hopefully, cannot run for president. Hopefully, hopefully New York gets them on tax evasion or something. Yeah. But getting Just back, like but getting Capone. back now to the Kosoji thing, to the Kosoji thing. It worked with Al Capone. Yeah, let's go right. to the Kosoji thing. Um, uh, he, today, Biden, you know, has said to the... Uh, uh, Confirmed that it was... Well, the the, the the head of uh, of Saudi Arabia, whatever his name is, not, not the son who's you know who the, the son is accused right. of having M B A M B no no M B A is accused of having been you know given the orders to go kill Khashoggi. His father is running the kingdom, okay. And in his talk with the father, uh, he told him they were upset by that, and that the, you know this report came out. Uh, uh, is saying exactly what went on, and that report was not was being held from being released and being made uh, uh, covered up. Special, covered up. you know, it's, yeah. you know, could, you couldn't release right. it by Trump. But now right. Biden said, "Go ahead, release it." And he came out and said, "Hey, you know, uh, uh, the son." But we knew all along anyway. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, but Biden is not going to take any sanctions against Saudi Arabia for that. In spite of the fact the guy was a reporter for an American newspaper, you know. he was an American citizen too. Was he a citizen? I don't know. No, he wasn't no. a citizen. He, no. he was just a. Yeah. He had a green card. He had a green yeah. card and was yeah. working for what the uh, Washington Post. Yeah, yeah one of those. Yes, yeah, Washington Post. Uh, and um, uh, but but Biden has decided he's not going to penalize. The Saudis for it. Yeah, we we and, need their oil. And I well, we don't need their oil. Not We're, as much anymore, but we still do. We don't. Yeah. We you know very little of the oil that we use we get from the mid from the Middle East. You know, so I mean, I don't know I mean, why we like to cozy up to the Saudis. You know, I I can understand the oil for a while there. But then again, they need us too. They got to get somebody to buy that oil, and if we don't buy that oil. You know that hurts oh, yeah. them too, uh, but I just you know I just I don't know I just I, I Biden's a little wishy washy on certain things. Mm -hmm. Now I understand why he doesn't want to put the minimum wage thing in this package because it, it's just going to hold it up, okay? But that he should then forge ahead with trying to get the fifteen hour Absolutely. per hour dollar per hour wage. But I'm saying it should be. Twenty-five, yeah. <laughs> and everybody should make fifty-two thousand dollars a year because, in today's market, that's the kind of money you need just to survive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. They should break it out and make a new bill with just the, uh, just for the uh, the minimum wage. Yeah. Right. And, um, yeah. And, and make the make make the uh, the uh, the Republicans in the Senate block it. Mm -hmm. Because it would need 60 votes because it's not a, uh, you know, you can't do it on reconciliation and then say, OK, you're going to block that. Fine. Yeah. Let's get rid of the uh, get rid of the um, what do they call it? The filibuster. Mm -hmm. And then we'll fucking push it through without it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, mm -hmm. but all I'm saying is I understand why he maybe is moving it out of that package. But I, I think um, I'm getting are you getting tired of Biden being on television too much? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I don't watch it. I'm, I'm delightfully bored. That Every you time I turn it on, the, the only two people you see on MSNBC anymore is Joe Biden or Anthony Fauci. Yeah, you know? and I'm on. sick of seeing both of them. Just you know, send me a memo. Let me know what's happening, and do your job, and leave me alone. I, you know, I don't need you on television every five minutes. You know, I wish mm -hmm. they would like get caught in some kind of scandal mm -hmm. and like Cuomo disappear. You know, Cuomo's like been tap tap dancing around dealing with the press, so he doesn't have to be asked questions. Did you really touch her knee? You know? Yeah. The Saudi butcher is isn't, MBS. Isn't the, isn't the, isn't the yeah. woman that accused him, Tony, of, uh, of improprieties, isn't she running for mayor of New York? You know, I think you might be right, Alex. Yeah. I, think she, I think you might be correct on yeah. that. I think oh, she has yeah. aspirations. Uh, do we have a motive, folks? Maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so convenient. Because mm -hmm. the election, I think you said the other day, I was listening to the Monday show, I think you said the election is in the fall, right? For the mayor then. For the mayor's in the fall, yeah, yeah. Witch hunt. Yeah. And um, they, they, everybody's like, you know, who do we have? We have that guy who was running for president, want to give everybody $1,000. Oh, yeah. He doesn't like me. Yang. I Yang. like him, Alex. He's, he wants to give he's, money. he's running for mayor. I don't no. care. Listen, anybody's better than de Blasio. Yeah, de Blasio you know. Too. He's very divisive. He's huh? gone. The school chancellor dropped down now today, or where they see he stepped down. Really? Yeah, they were saying it was on the radio. Uh, oh, I don't saying, know. They just handled. They, with they've things. handled this whole distribution of of uh, the vaccine so badly. To begin with, there shouldn't be anything like the city program and the state program. There should be one program, either run by the state or run by the city or whatever, that, that deals with this and it's coordinated. But it's like uh, I was talking to my doctor who works at Mount Sinai, and I said, "Can you get the COVID?" Uh, uh, vaccine there and he said no he said sometimes they put out a notice yeah we have some he said but we don't get much and I said why you're a hospital and then he said because Cuomo wants all that supply for his little you know vaccine centers so I mean it should not become a political football and that, I, I think it should be a coordinated effort you know and the databases should talk to the databases and it should be done in a nice, smooth fashion. And I hear in California, it's pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. The people walk in, they get it fast, and they get out. Yeah, you know? right. And here in New York, it seems to be a major clusterfuck, and we can't figure out why. And old because people, it's New York. and then they got old people standing out in the cold <laughs> while they're spending two and a half hours getting you in for your shot. There's something Aww. very, very wrong about that, you know? It's time and, for you to move back to California. Well, no, not really. <laughs> you know, I hear that uh, you know that San Francisco is just full of Silicon Valley assholes. You know, so. <laughs> oh, know, whoa! And he didn't even put it on Facebook, right on the show. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Anyway, do you know the way to San Jose? Yes. Do you know the way to San yes. Jose? You go south. South 101 or 280, either way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, for most of my life in living in San Francisco, I never went to San Jose. Yeah. yeah. Really? Thank yeah. you. Do you know I, the way? I think That's I've been in... Yeah, I do. I think... I've, <laughs> but then I started when I worked at the Live 105, we did these breakfasts with Dennis, and we did some of them in San Jose, so then I yeah. was in San Jose. It's but up the until then... Cover. Up until then, I, I had never been to San Jose. I think I went down there once to try and see if I could get an abortion for my girlfriend. But that was about it. That was about it. <laughs> anyway. Did you remember Don the Beachcomber? Huh? Don't you remember that Bennett breakfast with Bennett at Don the Beachcomber? I know I don't. You know? Yeah. Did I do it? I don't know. Was Cooper Tino, I, I was doing a lot of drugs yeah. back then. Yeah. Anyway, right. hey, listen, that's it for the week. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 thank you so much, Dan, for joining us tonight and having all those nice things to say about uh, about Jeff. And thank uh, Alan, thank you so much. Good having you here. Uh, please don't mind what that guy had to say. I defended you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, 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 Brian Neary, thank you. Charlie Wallace. Old Charlie Fortos. <laughs> Great to see you again. Trucker cool. Steve, good to see you. Jeff, you know I love the hell out of you and, and your wife. You're great people. Ray Renati, he's even been to this apartment. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. Uh, yeah. and, and John Larkin and Tony. Uh, Tony's been to this apartment too. Gee, a lot of you people have something in common. Jeff. Thanksgiving 2021. Yeah, we're going. We're all coming. Anyway, uh, everybody give Invasion. a big everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel. Let me just hang up on them unceremoniously. Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the intersection on GabNet. Uh, his uh, his way of getting the way of getting to him is using Skype, and the address is GabNet Live. I'll see you again uh, Monday with the uh, four o'clock show, four o'clock Eastern, the pop up show, and then I'll see you again right back here for this show on Tuesday. A night at uh, 1030. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there. And wear a mask, and if you can, get a vaccine.